Hi guys, I'm Quinn Marie with Red Carpet Report. We are here at the Paley Center for a screening and Q&A of Cosmos, a space-time odyssey. We're going to be talking with some of the show's creators as well as astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. I can feel myself getting smarter already. Hi. Hello. I'm Quinn. Hello. Quinn. Nice Hi, to I'm meet Neil. you. Hi. Lovely to meet you. Hi. I'm very excited. Thank you. All right, let's talk about this. So, I asked Anne and I asked Mitchell this. I just want to get your take on finding the balance between a personal voyage and space-time odyssey. Did you Try, I mean, trying to keep the integrity of the first one, but there's been so many advances in the past 30 years. Like, how was that trying to balance the yeah. two? Yeah, so it wasn't so much a balance. Uh -huh. It's a continuation of a journey. So we weren't remaking the original. If we were, then we'd say, oh, what do we keep? What do we throw away? Yeah. What do we do? And we didn't even have to go through it. There were some potent educational tools yeah. that were developed in the original one. The cosmic calendar, uh, the ship of the imagination got reimagined to be a stronger storytelling element in Space Time Odyssey than in a personal journey. But uh, otherwise, we combed the universe of discoveries and culled from it those elements that matter to who and what we are in the universe. So it wasn't simply an update of science. Yeah. There's plenty of documentaries that can do that for you. Yeah. The documentary on black holes and the Higgs boson and the search for life. And so that fills that, that space is covered. Mm -hmm. What distinguishes Cosmos from the rest of them is finding out why science matters okay. to not only you as an individual, but you as a citizen mm -hmm. of the planet Earth, mm -hmm. as a shepherd of our civilization itself. Very nice. Um, along with Ship of the Imagination, the things you kept, you also added uh, the element of animation, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, initially it was like, uh, because this was uh, Seth MacFarlane's suggestion, uh -huh. because in the previous one they were live action yeah. actors, and there was a concern on many levels that we didn't want to have these long segments with people with glued on mutton chops <laughs> and fake British accents yeah. playing. And if you animate that, it will create another sort of vocabulary, another set of vocabulary words that can be used to storytell. And you're not limited by the actor's schedules. Exactly. We can get name brand voice talent to do it on their time. Yeah. So we got Patrick Stewart, we got Richard Gere, um, we got Kirsten Dunst. So we've got name brand people to voice these characters. And uh, Seth was even one of the characters. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'll have to, to rewatch it. What about travel? What was the travel budget? I mean, you went everywhere. Yeah, so it, was, it was seven countries, and but 70 locations, something 70 like that. Locations. It was some large number locations within seven countries. Yeah. And so it was a major, I, I, apparently actors go through this all the time. I didn't, you know, my, my day job, I'm an academic, <laughs> is my day job. Yeah. So this was, this was novel to me that we would do this, but it's 13 broadcast hours, so it is actually longer yeah. than several yeah. movies yeah, yeah. back to back. But um, it was exciting for me, and my favorite place, and you didn't ask when I'm gonna tell you my favorite Please place. Tell me. It was Iceland, yes. which I think is misnamed. It should be called Volcano Land, <laughs> because it's, it's living on active lava fields. And so where you can walk around and there's smoke coming over from here and there's gurgling soils over here. Yeah. So it became a, 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 it became a fertile backdrop yeah. for early Earth before it formed, for alien planet, for apocalyptic Earth. You know, it was just an, a very useful place yeah. to get a lot of different cosmically imagined scenes yeah. on one trip. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. So, um, hopefully Cosmos will be an ongoing, on-running thing. After you, I mean, if you ever decide to stop, are there any up-and-coming science figures that you would want to see host Cosmos? I would hope. I would hope and expect. Uh, there is no hope. There's only do, or whatever, whatever Yoda said. Uh, I would expect that given the success of Cosmos, that a whole generation of people will rise up so that I can take the torch and pass it to them. And as the, I felt metaphorically that the torch had been handed to me yeah, from Carl Sagan. Right, so, yeah. And so, and I was honored and, and did not take that responsibility lightly. Yeah. So if others rise up, then that's how it should be. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Such okay, an honor to be. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit like if you like this video and subscribe for more interviews and leave me a comment with your favorite scientific discovery.